So right now we're going to look at a brand new feature in Photoshop and then I'm going to give you some tips, some things you probably didn't know about it. So the frame tool got some new shapes. It got custom shape and a triangle, but I'm going to show you how to make it fit any shape you want. And I'm also going to give you some other tips on using this. So if we look at the frame tool, it used to just be a rectangle and a circle. Let's try the new triangle just so I can show you before we create the custom shape. So notice it creates a triangle. And at this point here, we can just drop an image in or we can choose import image and then we can drop an image in there and we can move it around, reposition it, do whatever we want. And this remains a vector shape. So the shape is independent than the image. So we can move the shape around. We can resize it. We can rotate it. We can do all the things we want to do with this shape independent of the image. And of course, if we choose the image, we can reposition it within that shape. Okay, what's more exciting though is the ability to use it on a custom shape. If we look at it here, we can go into the shapes and all of our shapes are available. Now I'm going to show you how to do your own custom shape in a moment. We can go under our legacy shapes and I'll show you how to get those in just a second. But if say we wanted to use things like, I don't know, like an arrow. So we can click on the arrow, we can apply it here. If we want to put it in there, we can choose to import the image or we can generate an image. And why don't we just call it arrows? Should be just kind of fun. And now we have an arrow full of arrows. And if you're getting any value out of this video, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications. You won't miss any of my videos. Get those additional shapes. What we want to do is choose window. We're going to go down to the shapes. Click the little hamburger menu and then choose legacy shapes and more. And this will load in all these shapes that we used to have before. But of course, you know, we can do it with other things. And of course, you know, we can use some of the newer shapes here. We draw that shape, we get an animal and why don't we generate an image and we'll just do fur and hide that arrow. And then of course we can reposition this. By just dragging it around. And you can get some interesting results. Okay, what about a custom shape? I want to make my own shape. Okay, well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to grab the pen tool. Okay, so with the pen tool, let's draw a shape. I don't know, we'll just do something rough just for fun. And then what we want to do is we want to go under the edit menu and then we're going to define a custom shape. So here's the shape. We click OK. All right, we don't need that anymore. Let's go and use it. Let's grab our frame tool. And if you look at the very bottom, you'll see there's the shape that we just created. Now we can click and drag that out. And let's choose import image from the taskbar. Let's grab one of my photos, click place. And now we have the photo within that frame. All right, let me show you an easy way to create more complex shapes. Let's open a photograph and say we want to shape in the silhouette of our person. Grab the object selection tool and then choose select subject. Notice now we have the silhouette. We're going to change it into a path. Go to the paths panel and choose make work path from the menu. Leave the tolerance at two. Now we have a path. Choose edit, define custom shape. Boom. Now we've got the shape of a person. Let's use it. Let's go to the frame tool under the custom shape. There's our person and let's just drag it out. Notice it's stretched. Let me show you how to constrain that shape. Let's delete that. This time, hold down the shift key. And as you do that, that will constrain our shape. And now we have the proper proportions. And at this point here, why don't we generate an image? Let's generate off that. Okay, cool. Now, what if we wanted to do something like maybe put a drop shadow in here? How would that work? Well, here's the thing. It doesn't work. If we go into select and then we choose to add a drop shadow, 
Notice that the shadow is not showing up because it's inside this frame. Here's a solution to that. Go to the frame, right click. Let's go down to merge group. So what this does is it turns the mask into a vector mask, which can still be modified. But if we go to apply a layer style now, like a drop shadow, and now our layer styles work correctly. And this is still a vector mask, so it's nice and crisp, and we can still edit it. If we choose the direct selection tool, we can drag on here and we can still modify this mask. So thanks for watching this video. Let me know in the comments underneath if you're gonna find this useful or if you learned anything new. And if you're new to the cafe, welcome. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and you won't miss any of my videos. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.